Greetings AP Calculus AB students, Mr. Record here from Avon High School and we're going to take a look at video number three from topic 2.9 all about the quotient rule but in this video we're going to do something a little different. We're going to show you when it's maybe not the best idea to use the quotient rule because just because you're taking the derivative of a quotient doesn't mean that you always have to use it and maybe sometimes it's a little easier to avoid it. So let's take a look at the example that I'm talking about. This is example three from my notes curriculum and it shows you that we have a couple of functions here part a and part b and I've got three uh, columns that we need to fill in. We have our original function of course and then a rewrite column, a differentiate column, and a simplify column, and our job is to fill in this table. So if we look at problem A, yes we have a quotient, and of course we could use the quotient rule, but I sometimes say it's kind of like putting a match out using a fire hose. It's a little bit overkill. So what we can do is recognize the fact that first of all there is a single monomial term in the denominator, 6. That's all we need to know to avoid using the quotient rule. So for the rewrite, you might want to call this y equal to, and you could say x squared over 6, there's nothing wrong with that, or you could call it 1 sixth x squared. Maybe that would be the easiest way to write it so that we're ready to take the derivative here in a few moments. And then we would add of course, and then 3x over 6 could be reworked as 3 over 6 times x. They both have the same meaning. Now we have this in that very popular coefficient variable power form so that we can take the derivative. The derivative would end up being, well, the 2 comes out in front. We multiply by the constant that's there, 1 sixth, and then the power rule says that you're going to take 1 away from the exponent. We essentially do the same thing with the 3 over 6 times x, but in that particular instance, the derivative of a constant times x uses the constant multiple rule that says that the answer is only going to be that constant 3x, or uh, 3 over 6, sorry. And then finally, to simplify, you just basically write this a little bit differently. 2 times 1 6 would be the same as 1 third. Then you have your x to the first power. Don't need to write that one exponent. And then I can take 3 over 6 and reduce him to be 1 over 2. And that's one of many ways that you could express your final answer. We're going to leave it like that for now. Part B, same exact idea. Take a look at this denominator. Come to the realization that there's only one term in that denominator. So that's going to make our lives a little bit easier. Now, in order to rewrite this, I'm going to suggest that we maybe distribute this negative 3 in the numerator because that will get rid of all of our parentheses. That'll be a very nice thing to have out of the way. Now, once we are at this stage, we can break it apart in our rewrite statement, and we would have negative 9 over 7, x over x, which is just simply going to cancel away, so we just have the negative 9 sevenths. And then for our other term, we would have 6 over 7 multiplied by x squared over x, or x to the first, and I think we've got this in a position where we can take the derivative. Taking the derivative using our rules, we know the derivative of a constant is of course going to be zero, even if that constant is this ugly fraction. And then the derivative of a constant 6 sevenths times x with respect to x is just 6 over 7. And when you look at this, there's really not much to simplify except to maybe not write the zero plus. So you don't have to do much there. And that's a couple of really quick examples that will illustrate how you can avoid the quotient rule if you want to. It makes things just a little bit easier. I often tell my students, how is it that you know that you can avoid the quotient rule? I always say, if you can count to one. And we're talking about one as in one term in the bottom. Always avoid the quotient rule in those situations. Anyway, I hope this helps out. We'll see you at the next video.